Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, where an expert from Google is going to share how to leverage data to win with YouTube. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We got back from NADA, where we were awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented sixth year in a row, and we also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites, and FCA announced that we're now an approved vendor. 2017 is looking bright. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. You want to know more? Yeah, you do. You can check us out at DealerOn.com. We have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Tim Mueller as our presenter today. Tim Mueller is an automotive retail strategist at Google in the Southeast region. He spent his career in the automotive business consulting with dealers and manufacturers to help them coordinate their marketing and advertising initiatives. As part of Google's automotive retail team, he is responsible for, for, for providing regional specific insights and recommendations that support manufacturers, dealer advertising associations, and large dealer groups to grow their businesses in the ever-changing digital landscape. He's a graduate of the University of New Hampshire with degrees in marketing and entrepreneurial venture creations, and he can be reached on LinkedIn. Now, during the presentation, if you have questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we're going to answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. Don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Oh, and guess what? Our good friends over at Google, they're giving away an amazing prize today. One lucky attendee is going to win a Google Home, a voice-activated speaker that gives you hands-free help from the Google Assistant. This prize is valued at $130, and quite honestly, it is the coolest freaking thing on the market today. I am so jealous, people, but you have to be on the live broadcast to win it. So stay tuned, and who knows, you might be the one walking away with this super cool prize today. And at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey, so fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want to hear what you have to say about today's presentation. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation. So don't be afraid. Tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby or I'm at Eliana Raggio. I look forward to seeing what you're saying. All right, everyone, let's get started. Let's listen in as an expert from Google shares how to leverage data to win with YouTube. Tim Mueller, longtime listener, first time presenter. Glad to have you here. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for having me. Can you hear me okay? You sound great. And yes, the pleasure is all mine. I have heard from so many people that you are an amazing presenter. So I'm expecting big things from you today, Mr. Mueller. And I know you have a lot of information to get to. So tell everyone where we're going to start, please. All right. Wow. No pressure. Well, thanks for having <laughs> me. Thanks for joining. Um, you know, today my goal is for you to basically come out of this webinar with a better understanding on how to reach consumers uh, in the ever-changing environment, right? Um, we're going to talk about YouTube today. Uh, we're going to learn how we can reach the people that are those cord cutters that have maybe cut off their cable bill. Um, we're also going to talk about how to leverage Google's data based on all the different properties that we own to be in front of the right customer at the right time. Um, <clears throat> I want you to also begin to think about how you can build your video library. It, it's a no-cost uh, opportunity, and uh, we have some great tools uh, available for you that you can leverage today. And then we'll, we'll go through the giveaway and open it up with some Q&A. So that said, let's jump right in. Uh, my name is Tim Mueller. As Eliana said, I'm an automotive retail strategist. Uh, basically, what does that mean? I'm the boots on the ground for Google. For a long time, <clears throat> Google's kind of been a little bit of a black box where you know we have a lot of really smart folks that uh, that that work at Google but may not necessarily understand the auto space. I spent the past decade at a tier three agency, so my job is to kind of tie what Google is doing into how it's going to help you as a dealer sell and service more vehicles. So we kind of breeze through the agenda, but we're going to talk about the changing consumer behavior at a very macro level. Uh, we're going to talk about the the trends that are changing this digital future and shaping the future. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen our Path to Purchase study, but we do a, a study every year with Miller Brown and R.L. Polk, and we analyze U.S. auto shoppers. We ask them questions like, 
how many brands did you consider? Um, what were the main drivers behind your your ultimate purchase decision? And when you finally bought the car, yeah, you know, what were the main, what were the biggest things, right? <clears throat> so we'll talk about our data from our path to purchase study, and then we're going to talk about how to win with YouTube. I get the question a lot, you know, what's the next big thing? I'm doing paid search. I got my SEO set up. What else can I be doing? Our answer would be YouTube, and we're going to talk about how to leverage big data <clears throat> to help with a great YouTube strategy. So. We're going to start first about talking about the changing consumer, right? I, I wish I could see a show of hands, but I assume some of you on, on the uh, webinar here have kids, right? And you tell them to brush their teeth for at least two minutes every night. <laughs> well, how often does that really happen? Well, we now know with this toothbrush that records how long your kids brush their teeth and it reports it back to your smartphone. No way. And Seriously? It's I got to get that toothbrush. Wait, what's the name of the toothbrush? <laughs> um, I think it's made by Oral-B. I'm going to Google it. Don't worry. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> Just Google it. There you go. <laughs> but it's amazing. Everything we do today is connected to the web. In fact, there, there's estimates that by the year 2020, over 50 billion devices will be connected. Uh, these dog collars, if for those of you who have pets, monitor your pet's sleep, eating, and exercise activities. Uh, how about Nest? If you guys have Nest, <clears throat> it's a company that Google owns. It's a digital thermostat where you can control the temperature of the inside of your house from literally anywhere on the planet. So everything we're doing today is connected to the web. We've got this mantra at Google of evolving, adapting, and growing. And if you think about how Google's progressed from you know, the, the early 2000s to where we are today, it's amazing, right? <laughs> I think of our lives like this. In 1998, <clears throat> don't get in cars with strangers and don't meet people from the internet. Fast forward to 2017, literally summon somebody from the internet to go get in their car, right? evolve, adapt, grow. The way we're doing things today have changed drastically. And it's no different for the people that are looking for a vehicle, whether it's for a new car, or a used car, or service. I think of Amazon as, as kind of a, a big driver in this change in consumer behavior. So I'm an Amazon shopper admittedly, and, and you know I like Amazon because I have control and convenience. I can access information 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So when my wife tells me that we are you know, out of trash bags and I'm on a flight back home to DC, I can quickly and easily go on my phone and order that product and it'll be there that day. I can consider more options in a shorter period of time. And because of that, I'm now a more informed consumer. And because of those two things, I have really high expectations, right? Extraordinary is the new ordinary. Gone are the days of people going to 15 different dealerships and, and kicking the tires. They want to go to one or two dealerships and, and get that information as quickly as possible. <clears throat> There's a great quote that came from one of, uh, actually, my boss at Google, Peter Lito, who you may know. And he said, you know, we're, we're not doing different things. We're doing the same things differently. Not doing different things. We're doing the same things differently. And I, I, I really believe that's true of the automotive industry, right? I mean, we still pretty much desk deals the same way we did 5, 10, 15 years ago. We, we pretty much service cars and change oil the same way we did 5, 10, 15 years ago. But the way that customers are coming to our dealership and doing their research has changed drastically. I'll share two examples with you, and I'm sure you guys remember these two companies, Blockbuster and Kodak. Well, <clears throat> you know, I'm not here today to say that the, the uh, physical dealership experience is no longer important, but it's important to understand your customer. I'll use Blockbuster as an example here. <coughs> uh, I remember Blockbuster, and I remember they rented their last film in 2013. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix, but in their assessment, they made a critical error. And they didn't understand their customer. In fact, there were some quotes from the board of directors that came out that said, you know, our customers enjoy the suspense of coming to the physical brick and mortar location to see if the movie they wanted is in stock. <laughs> right? <laughs> they didn't. No, <laughs> Did not, we didn't. Right. <laughs> right. And they also said they enjoyed seeing their neighbors as they peruse the aisles looking for the next best okay. option, right? Also, <laughs> no, incorrect. <laughs> we don't want to see I, anyone. I when we go out in our, in our jammies to go and get a movie real fast, no, we don't want to see well, anyone. That's, that's just it. I, like, the last time I went to Blockbuster, I think I had a hoodie on because I wanted to be antisocial that night, right? <laughs> but the, the message here is evolve, adapt, grow. And, and Kodak is, is kind of the same, you know? Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that in the 70s, the lead engineer came to the board of directors with the idea of a digital camera. And they said, quote, that's cute, but don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> Our 
Our business is film, and this is filmless technology. Evolve, adapt, grow. <clears throat> Again, I'm not here to advocate that the money you spent on your facilities and, and the in dealership experience is no longer important, but we've got to get inside the minds of our customers and understand how we're going to change our dealership strategy as they begin to change their behaviors. <clears throat> You know, I spent a lot of time in stores, and, and my clients used to tell me, Tim, I don't care what it takes, whether we got to give away gold coins, steak knives, the key to start the car on the mailer, right? whatever it is, we need customers in the dealership. We need, a, we need a big Saturday, right? Well, candidly, that's kind of the old way of thinking about things. The new mantra is, how do I get my dealership to as many customers as possible and provide them a really seamless and great experience online? Think of the retailers that you typically shop for online. They probably have a really great mobile experience. Uh, the, the experience is probably pretty similar on a desktop or a laptop as it is on your phone, right? So, so be, be thinking about that. And I challenge all of you, whether you call on clients or you own a dealership or you're the internet manager, go online and shop as if you're the customer. See what it's like to schedule an oil change from your mobile device. Uh, see if your inventory has pictures on it. Simple things like that. Um, are, are really, really important. <clears throat> you know, the, the, there's three kind of macro trends that we've boiled down at Google that are guiding this change in consumer behavior. And those three things are time, transparency, and technology. I don't know about you, but I would argue that time is quite literally the new currency. I mean, if you think about your daily life, we, we do everything we can to save ourselves time. Whether that means you're willing to pay a little bit more for a direct flight than having a layover because it saves time. Did um, that. Or, I did that yesterday, yep. There you go. <laughs> or I, I live in Northern Virginia, and, and Eliana, I know you live in Jersey, where tolls are astronomically expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally $8 one way for me to get to work, but it saves me about 30 to 40 minutes. So you're willing to pay that to save yourself time. For those of you who wake up in the morning, you know the way to your dealership or to your office, right? But you might punch in Google Maps what the fastest way to get there to save yourself time. So we've got to be cognizant of that in our dealership experience. And transparency. <clears throat> I'm not saying that we need to disclose how much money we're making on each car or, or the gross per RO, but things like having pictures on your dealership website is critically important. My wife and I bought a new car uh, for her a, a couple months ago, and the vehicle she picked she picked it because it had actual pictures of it. There was a hundred other ones that had stock photos, but she picked the white one because she knew exactly what it looked like. That's transparency. And then technology. How are you leveraging your digital platforms to provide that really nice seamless experience? Again, going back to Amazon, I can quickly and easily go on my phone and order something and it's there that day. And it's the same experience as I have on a laptop or a desktop. So time, transparency, and technology. <clears throat> We're going to talk about from digital to dealership. So this is part of our, our path to purchase study that we do every year. The average person, and this, this slide is actually from eMarketer. The average person, forget about age, demographic, income, gender, anything like that. The average person consumes 43.6% of their overall media consumption on the Internet, 37% on TV, and 16% or so on radio and print combined. <clears throat> well, fast forward when that customer enters the market. That number on internet consumption jumps to 75%. And I'm not here necessarily advocating that you need to be spending 75% of your overall media mix on, on internet marketing, but I think it's important to understand that that's where customers are going when they're shopping for a car. So another takeaway is analyze your media mix, right? In the old days, it was like, yeah, I'll spend 50% of my marketing on, on, on print and the other 50% on radio and TV, and we're good to go. Well, that, that paradigm has shifted, right? And we've got to be kind of future-proofing of where customers are, are shopping and being in front of them. <clears throat> because the average person is, is visiting one to two dealerships, one to two. So what does that mean for us as, as automotive retailers, right? If we got a lot up, there's a pretty darn good shot you can sell that customer a car that day. The number in 2005, by the way, was five. So obviously more and more people are doing their research online before they come to the store. Part of our research, we found that the average person spends 16.75 hours shopping for a car. That's actually, believe it or not, Eliana, that's more than people spend looking for a surgeon. They'll spend more time looking for a car than looking for an actual medical doctor. Okay, doctors. I'm going to have to agree with you on that. I literally picked the, the doctor, our family doctor, after only maybe five minutes online. <laughs> that's bad. I know it's bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
but, but it's crazy, right? I mean, every single year we're seeing about an additional hour being spent uh, on shopping for a car. The main driver behind that increased time is online video watch time. Um, 89% of these people are in market for three months or less. So why is that important for us automotive retailers? Well, if I'm in market for a car in April, there's a pretty good shot I'll be in the market in May and a pretty good shot I may even be in the market in June. So what does this mean for us? Well, we've got to be always on. As automotive retailers, I understand that we like to kind of pulse our marketing sometimes and, and maybe in a softer month like February, we may go dark, right? Digital has to be always on. So if I'm in your backyard, raising my hand, looking for a Honda Accord, and you're my local Honda dealer, you've got to be there to give that good experience and get that customer to your site. What was really interesting and <laughs> almost kind of alarming in a way is that we found that 63% of the people that entered the market didn't even know what model they wanted. They considered four different brands. So if I'm in the market for a midsize sedan, you know, I don't know if I want an Accord, an Optima, an Altima, or a Camry, right? I'm, I'm considering four different brands. In 2013, that number was three. So what does this mean? Customer loyalty is, is falling off. By the way, for Hispanics, uh, Hispanics consider 5.4 brands, and millennial Hispanics consider six brands. So this begs the question, <clears throat> at the top of the purchasing funnel, if I'm searching for something like Honda Accord versus Nissan Altima, right, does your dealership show up? Or are you doing some kind of search query like that or, or, or running an AdWords campaign at a tier two level when people are kind of deciding between brands. It begs the question, what is that strategy there? <clears throat> so we know that customer loyalty is falling off. 65% of the people in America switched brands from the one they previously owned. So again, this begs the question, what is your what is your strategy at your dealership from a retention standpoint? Uh, knowing that six or seven out of every 10 customers in your DMS aren't buying another whatever you sell, <laughs> right? How are we shortening trade cycles? Are we selling cars out of the service lane? What is our fixed ops approach? We know that the more often customers come to our dealership for service, the higher propensity they have at buying their next car from us. It's no different than the restaurants that you frequent or the, the clothing uh, stores that you frequent, right? You're, you're more likely to do your next transaction at the, at the, at the merchant you're loyal to, right? 25% stay brand loyal, and then 10% were first time buyers. Okay, so, you know, we, we've got to win these customers online before getting the sale offline. We saw that the customers visit one to two dealerships. Well, they visit 4.6 dealership websites on average. So it's critically important to, to monitor and audit your dealership website on mobile, specifically first, and then on desktop. Because if you can't win the consideration online, the, the likelihood of you getting that customer to your lot falls off significantly. All right, Eliana, time for a poll question. You got it, sir. All right, audience, guess what? We have two wonderful poll questions for you coming at you. The first one is on your screen now. We'd love it if you take part in our poll question. It really helps us out, lets us learn what's happening in your dealership and dealerships all across the United States. So the question is, what percentage of your current monthly advertising budget is allocated to YouTube or online video? Please select one of the following. Do you feel it's less than 5%? Do you think it's somewhere between 5 and 10%? Do you feel maybe it's a little higher, 10 to 15%? Or are you one of those rare dealerships who is spending more than 15% of their budget on YouTube and online videos? Of course, the last answer is on there too. We don't currently spend any money on online videos. Oh, oh boy, of course I, I spelled that wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, or, or maybe you just don't know. You can select that as well. So once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. See, I told you I typed it in too fast, Tim. Darn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, good. Vodios. All right, so what percentage of your current monthly advertising budget is allocated towards YouTube or online videos? Tim, if you're ready, we have almost everyone voted already. Um, I can close this poll and share the results. Hopefully you got a nice drink of water while I was talking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's close this poll and share the results. All right, the majority of today's audience, 47%, almost half, say they're spending less than 5% of their current monthly advertising budget on YouTube or online videos. 26%, so like a quarter of today's audience, say they're between 5% and 10%. And the remaining 21% said that they don't currently 
I'm sorry, there's a little bit more here. Um, 3% of today's audience say that they are spending 10 to 15%. Only 3% of today's audience say they're spending more than 15%. And then 21% of today's audience said that they don't currently spend any money on online videos. Tim, is that what you were thinking was going to be the answer? Yeah, that falls that falls pretty much in line with, with what I would think. So Okay, and can, let me ask you, okay, but let me follow up with this question. How is there a formula? How much should maybe we be spending a month on online videos? You know, I, I wish there was a definitive answer to that. But unfortunately, there's not. Uh, the the budget recommendation would vary by market. It would vary by brand. It would vary by who you want to reach. Mm -hmm. um, just like saying, you know, what's what should my paid search budget be? There, there's really not one answer for that, unfortunately. Okay. But we can certainly help alongside dealer on to provide you with what those budgets should look like. Well, that sounds like a good idea. All right, where do we go from here? Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. It looks great. Great. So <clears throat> we kind of set the stage at how customers are changing their be their their shopping behaviors. We talked about why it, digital is important. Now let's talk about kind of navigating this changing video landscape. So <clears throat> I'm going to play a quick video for you. We're going to go back in time a little bit. If it's choppy, I apologize. It's actually one of my most favorite videos of all time. But Eliana, I'll send you the link to this, and you can include it in your follow-up. Okay, so and we'll and just yeah, just so everyone knows, you know, this is go-to webinar. Okay, we all know it's going to be choppy, but the audio is really good, and I'm sure you've probably seen almost all of this video already. Um, but it's a really great reminder. <laughs> it's a really good video, so I love this video too. By the way, Tim, and um, <laughs> you'll you'll definitely be able to get where this is going. All right, Tim, whenever you're ready. Let's take a little walk in the past. <laughs> By side comparison with the Honda Accord. Expect 15 for sale on the Honda floor. Your Toyota dealer is Dream Fever Sales of Amazon now. So come on over and test Toyota Fever. Make your deal today. Inside back to savings up to $2,400 for a limited time now at your Western Mass Chevy dealer. No one saves you more. Test drive the new Accord. It will give you a pair of driving gloves or a computer designed telephone. Your choice. A comparison between the Plymouth Laser and Tina Turner. Does car shopping confuse you? Seven grand right around the corner to Chevrolet Geo Dealers. The handsome, dashing Ford Aero Star for 1989. It's really quite a fan about town. Traveling with the sports crowd. Playing the market. Escorting ladies. Pulling its own weight. Staying out all night. And powering its way to the top. Ford Aerostar. It's in a class by itself. Chevy Trucks. For today's American family, the 88 Royale is state of the art. From Hyundai. Yes, Hyundai. myself because I was laughing that entire time. Holy moly. And Jennifer Schrader, I'm so glad you're here today. Schrader. Um, she says, holy 80s. And by the way, get a free pair of driving gloves. And um, I'm sorry, but the Ford Aerostar commercial, best so one ever. <laughs> I love it. It's sporting ladies. And it's quite a van around town. Oh my gosh, it's the best one ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why did you show us this awesomeness from the past? <laughs> oh, it's so good. So good. So, um, you know, I, I showed you that because the way that we used to advertise has, you know, thankfully changed. But, you know, back in the day, the landscape uh, was different, right? Back in the MASH days, there was really limited programming you could choose from, and there was really just kind of three major networks. Um, I kind of think of this analogy like my, my hometown that I grew up in. There weren't a ton of, of options, right? 
Uh, I compare that to the to the days of now, where New York Times is kind of like our options for viewing, right? Um, there's hundreds of cable networks offering different niche programming for every enthusiast, right? I mean, you've got entertainment, you got HGTV, Food Network, History, Travel, like you name it, you can find it on TV. And this doesn't even include all the different online elements through things like, uh, you know, YouTube and Hulu and Netflix and Roku, like you name it. So we're, the, the, the message here is the landscape is just fragmented uh, more than ever, right? This is kind of what an American living room once looked like, right? I mean, if you notice, everyone's kind of huddled around watching one of the maybe three networks at the time. But if you notice what people are doing, they're all doing something uh, in addition to watching TV. One lady's reading the newspaper. Somebody's sitting on the floor drinking a, a soda. Uh, the guy on the left has a magazine in his hand, right? Well, fast forward to today, and this is <laughs> what the American living room looks like. Right? If, if you can get them all in, on the same couch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So everyone's got that second screen in their hand, and I'm sure you're probably the same as me when you're sitting down to watch a baseball game or whatever you watch. You probably have an iPad on your lap or, or a phone in your hand, right? So traditional channels just don't work the way they used to. In fact, all these media outlets are even taking note of this. I mean, if you read some of the headlines, how, did, how can you ditch cable? Uh, how to watch all the TV you want without paying a cable bill? Uh, and cable is survival of the fittest. And, and even on Wall Street Journal, cable TV group uh, blames subscription web TV for rating woes. I mean, you know, I'm not here to bash TV today, but we need to examine kind of why this is happening. I'm sure you guys all know this guy, right? Jimmy Fallon, he's hilarious. Jersey boy, um, yeah. <clears throat> that's right. <laughs> but even Jimmy Fallon was impacted by this shift in consumer behavior. Um, you know, what they're doing today, I mean, if, I don't know if you're like me, I think I've seen his TV show live maybe once or twice because I'm, I'm lame and I go to bed early, but the majority <laughs> of the skits that I watch actually came from YouTube. You know, the executive producer of The Tonight Show said, we see YouTube as a way to get what we're doing on TV to more people. We always have to be future-proofing. I mean, that's an executive producer of a major TV show. NBC Universal CEO Steve Burke said, we think about 70% of the views of Jimmy Fallon's show come from online, and the majority of his views are unmonetized. That's amazing, right? Part of the study we also found, and I'm kind of jumping back and forth here, but you know, TV watch time across all the big DMAs are, are down because of this fragmentation. Um, from 2012 to 2016, I mean, down double digits, 28% in Boston, 14% in Atlanta, right? The viewership has just gone down. Um, in 2012, the average uh, watch time on TV was four hours and 38 minutes. Today, that's four hours, just, just north of four hours. And we've seen a, a big shift from TV to online video watch time. 30% of online growth has come from video. So people are just shifting which screen they're watching. Let's for a moment talk about why online video is important to you as a car dealer or, or, or an advertiser. So in the, in the past year, we've seen a 220% year-over-year growth in online auto, auto video watch time. So 2.2 2 more times right, than, than a year ago. The, the, the three things that these people are watching, number one, are test drives, uh, features and options, and then walkthroughs, right? Show me what the, uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited looks like versus the Overland, right? People are going to YouTube to watch and, and get their research done before they go to the dealership. Part of the study, we also found that <clears throat> the average person watches 4.13 videos three months prior to buying a car. Uh, at two months, they watch 3.25 videos, and then one month out, they're watching 2.79. So video helps these customers narrow down their consideration set. What was really interesting in this study, you know, we found that um, if you look at the video consumption per brand over time, there's a very clear trend that customers actually start with more brands and then gravitate towards the brand they end up purchasing. In this example here, out of the videos they watched three months prior, 9%, only 9% were the brand that they ended up purchasing. So the message here is that <clears throat> YouTube can help you get your message out to more customers when they're at the top of that purchasing funnel, when they're considering the four or five different brands that they're looking at. So 
begs the question, are you doing, are you leveraging YouTube at your dealership level or even at a tier two or association level? How can you use YouTube to get to more people and drive more consideration? What was interesting is that we found the uh, top actions after somebody watched a video. The number one thing they did was use their computer to find more information. And the second thing was visit a dealership. <laughs> so not only does online video drive more consideration, it drives people to your store. And we saw in the study that people visit now one to two dealerships. So video can help you with, with solving for some of these changes, right? Okay, Tim, all good and great, but why do we care? Well, we care because in the U.S. there's about 110 million people who are of the ages 18 to 54 who drive 1,000 miles or more per year. At a very kind of macro level, that's who's buying our cars, right? Um, when you boil it down, though, the challenge is 13 and a half million are non-TV users or those cord cutters. And 32 million people are light TV viewers, which we've classified as the bottom one third of all watch time. So again, not here to bash TV. It works well, but only for about 60% of your audience. So we, we understand what people are watching, why they're watching it, but now how can YouTube help me efficiently target these audiences? Well, there's a couple things we're gonna talk about. <clears throat> the first one is what's called the local extra reach tool. Now, we can work with, with dealer owner, your provider, uh, uh, and run this analysis for you. What we've done is we said, okay, at either a, a tier two or even a tier three level, if you allocate X percent of your media budget from television to YouTube, we can definitively tell you what the outcome would be in terms of your cost per point, your reach, and your TRPs. How do we do this? Well, we've <coughs> partnered with Nielsen. We use squad data and what's called a Sansbury formula and, and shocker, right? Google's got an algorithm for this. What we do, in the past year, we, uh, we looked at 273 national automotive campaigns, and we found that 90% of the time, uh, and if you shifted money to YouTube, we would see an increase in the reach and efficiency just by integrating. We're not saying spend more, but just by shifting it, uh, you can see a significant increase. This is a, a real example of a, uh, a market in the southeastern part of the United States. Um, and we said, what happens if you, you know, realign 20% of your TV budget to YouTube? Well, the original T TV plan called for 417 TRPs, reached about 70% of the market, and the total investment was 273,000. The cost per point was 657. When we reallocated, money to YouTube, 20% in this case, and it doesn't have to be 20. Uh, we saw an additional 172 TRPs and an increase of 15 percentage points in reach. And look what it did to the cost per point. It dropped by nearly $200. And it's the same amount of money, you're just being more efficient with your funds. And knowing that more and more people are watching content on YouTube, we believe this is a really great place to be. So we understand the why, we understand how we can kind of target these people. Let, let's talk about the data for a moment here. This is what's really powerful. So what a lot of people don't know is that Google's got seven properties with over a billion monthly users between Chrome, Android, Gmail, Maps, YouTube, right, Google, Google Play. Seven products with a billion global users every single month. So what does this mean for you? Well, we've got a lot of great actionable data. We've got all these signals to identify the right people at the right moment with the right context. Um, you know, if you think about this, <laughs> we now know if you're logged into your Gmail account or your Android account or your YouTube account, kind of what you're searching for. This is really powerful for you as an advertiser. So now, if I'm logged in with any of these different devices or any of these different uh, platforms, and I go to kbb.com, and then I build and price a new Ford F-150, and then maybe I watch a video on the Chevy Silverado, and then I go back to chevy.com, right? All these different triggers, whether I'm using my mobile device, desktop, laptop, iPad, you name it, if I'm logged in, we're kind of pinging that customer to say, hey, this person is a hand raiser. <laughs> Tim went online and, and did a bunch of different research on pickup trucks. You can now use YouTube to reach those in-market shoppers. And at this point, if I'm typically speaking to a live audience, I'd say, you know, who thinks uh, pre-roll ads are annoying? And the majority of people raise their hand. And I agree, they're annoying when they're not relevant. So I don't have kids. And if I get an ad, because I'm watching the, 
highlights from the, the Red Sox game yesterday and I get an ad for Pampers Diapers, I'm going to skip that all day because it's not at all relevant to me. But what you don't know is I'm actually truly in market for, for a new truck. If I get an ad from my local Ford dealer on you know $8,000 off MSRP and financing as low as 0% for 72 months, that's a really relevant message based on my prior search history. So you can be in front of those people who are actively researching in your market and are intending to buy a vehicle in the next you know, 30, 60, 90 days, whatever the number is. Um, it also allows you to conquest customers, and we'll talk about how you can do that. So you know, another reason this is important is that there's, there's 19 of the 24 average touch points are digital. So if you think about yourselves, if you recently shop for a car or a washer or a dryer or maybe some furniture, right, you probably start on Google.com. You may have asked some, some people on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, you know, hey, how, what do you guys think about the new F-150? Then maybe you go and build and price a truck on the OEM website and then look at pictures and then maybe you got retargeted with an ad, right? There's, there's all these different touch points that these people get. If they are using any kind of Google property to do their, their shopping, we know that they're actively in market for a vehicle. So you as dealers, and, and if you're thinking of this as at a tier two association level, you can leverage this data in a particular market to be in front of those people who are literally raising their hand saying, hey, I'm in the market for a truck. So the question becomes, well, that's great, but how do we even begin to run the ads? The, the two, there's a, a bunch of different ways. The two main ways that we're going to talk about today is TrueView InStream and TrueView Discovery. Let's start with TrueView InStream. TrueView InStream is basically a, a way to, it, it's, a, it's a skippable uh, pre-roll ad for 30 seconds. You can do 15 second ads if you'd like um, that play in, in uh, the customer's either application or, or uh, desktop window. Um, the beauty of this is it's, it's free if you skip it before the full ad is played. So you notice in this example, you know, I searched for Gordon Ramsay's ultimate cookery course, how to cook the perfect steak, right? But based on my previous actions and my previous search history, uh, let's say I was looking for a Fiat, and this is an example here, you can serve that ad on why the Fiat 500 is, is a great option for you, right? So it, it's using that data to be in front of those right people at the right time. And if you think about if you were able to do this on TV and only target the households of people who were looking for trucks and you knew that they were actually in front of their TV watching that commercial, it's the same kind of thing. But you really get to narrow down your audience here and serve an ad that's very relevant to what people have searched for in the, in the past, you know, even hour. Um, why is this important? You know, you can kind of segment this uh, to whoever you'd like, right? So you can talk about um, your age groups. You can look for people that are watching things on sports or politics or outdoor enthusiasts. There's a, a bunch of different segmentation options. So if you're a Subaru dealer, for example, and someone's watching reviews on the best kayak, right, <laughs> maybe serve an ad because we know that a lot of Subaru enthusiasts are outdoors folks, right? Um, so there's a ton of different data that you can leverage to get your message to the right people at the right time. And, and again, this is obviously not the forum for it, but I can give you my email address and I can follow up with any questions you may have. So that's, that's TrueView Discover, or I'm sorry, that's TrueView InStream. The other is TrueView Discovery, and I think this is a really good option for advertisers, I think especially at Tier 2. You know, this is basically like paid search on YouTube. So these ads run all across YouTube and the Google Display Network, and it works just like paid search. So <clears throat> if I'm looking for the 2016 Toyota Camry, that's a pretty broad search, right? Honda served me an ad for the 2016 Honda Accord. Know all the navigation features of the 2016 Accord here, right? Think about if you're a part of an association or, or if you have the budget for it at your tier three dealership. You know, if someone searches for Honda Odyssey versus Toyota Sienna and you're the Honda dealer, talk about why the, the Odyssey is the best van on the market and all the accolades and, and awards that that vehicle's won over the past, you know, several, several years. Um, so you can drive consideration for people that are in market. And by the way, you can geofence this just like your paid search campaigns. So you could say, hey, anybody looking for a competitive maker model in my backyard, call it five mile radius, 10 mile radius, whatever you want to do, you can serve up these, these ads via YouTube discovery. And again, this is a really great um, product to drive awareness and for the people at the top of the purchasing funnel. 
we saw the people at the top of the funnel basically watch uh, on average four videos three months out and three two months out and then two videos uh, one month out from purchasing. TrueView Discovery ads are a really great option for you as an advertiser uh, at the kind of top of the funnel. So, Eliana, time for another poll question. Yes, it is. All right, audience. Our second poll question is on the screen now. We want to know what's happening in your dealership. So we want to know, which statement best describes your dealership's current YouTube status? Now, we have a few different options for you, so hopefully there's one that really uh, nails it or comes close, all right? So please select one of the following answers. We're slaying it on YouTube, and our videos are awesome, and you're getting lots of views, and everything's great. How about we're doing our best, we're doing okay, but you know what? We definitely need some YouTube help. We're not really seeing the results we'd like, and we know we could do better. How about we dabble a little bit on YouTube, but to be honest, it's not really a priority and, you know, maybe maybe management doesn't really see the ROI in YouTube yet. Fourth answer is we aren't doing enough with video and we know it and we have to do better. And the last answer is, gosh, we'd better get on our YouTube strategy together quickly because we know we're behind the eight ball and our competitors are doing it and we aren't there. And we know that if we don't do it, the customers won't see us online. All right, so once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And I'm just now starting to get some questions in for Tim Mueller. So if you haven't gotten in your question yet, no time to wait. Send those questions in after Tim's presentation. We're going to give away a prize or two. And then we're going to start on with our Q&A session. And we want to help you get better on YouTube. All right, so send those questions in. We're here for you. And Tim, a lot of people have voted already. We have about, um, we're coming up on, on 80% of today's audience have voted. So if you're ready, I will close this poll and share the results. Ready. All right, let's do it. All right, let's see what we got here. Only 6% of today's audience say that they're slaying it on YouTube. Their videos are awesome and they're getting lots of plays. However, 22% of today's audience say they're doing their best, they're on there, they're putting videos up, but they realize that they still need help on YouTube. They're maybe not seeing the results that they'd like. 19% of today's audience say that they dabble a bit on YouTube. It's not really a priority. Maybe they don't really know what the ROI is. The majority, however, 41% of today's audience says they realize that they are not doing enough with video. They know it and they know that they have to make a change. 41%, that's a lot of people. And then the remaining 13% said, yeah, we better get our butts in gear. Our YouTube strategy is waiting. We gotta get this together and get it up there quickly because we are doing nothing on YouTube right now. All right, Tim, I don't know if that helped you out or not. It kinda makes me sad to see that maybe there's a lot of dealerships who aren't doing YouTube the way they should be or aren't doing YouTube enough. But that just means that there's room to grow, right? There's there's room for people to go up. Absolutely, and hopefully you can take some of this stuff away today and, and, and start getting your strategy together. So, um, are, do you make that full screen or do I need to do it? No, you gotta do it. <laughs> You're so close, there you go. <laughs> cool. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for that uh, interaction, much appreciated. So, <clears throat> we, I kind of threw a lot at you. We talked about why video is important. We talked about how you can target customers using Google's data. We talked about the different formats. Now let's talk about case studies, because I can sit here and talk about YouTube to the cows come home, but sometimes it's just better to hear from the dealers themselves. So I'll play another video for you. Hopefully you can hear it. Yeah, the video will be choppy, we know that, but um, these are from three different dealers uh, throughout the US, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, a couple other case studies afterwards. <laughs> Morgan, CEO of Morgan Auto Group. We've got 13 retail automotive dealerships in the state of Florida, and we have the largest retailer of automobiles uh, in the city of Tampa. Monthly, I have direct oversight of a million and a half dollars in advertising spend, so we're constantly looking for products that can bring us economies of scale and greater efficiency in our advertising. The YouTube TrueView ads bring that to us. My name's John Morasi. I'm the managing partner of Brandon Honda. As we went into the political year, uh, we made a conscious decision to swing from, you know, that traditional network TV or even cable for that matter, 
My name is Tim Van Dinsberg, and I'm the general manager of Mountain States Toyota. Our advertising uh, philosophy at Mountain States Toyota is really simple. It's 100% digital. We found that the way people consume things today and when people want to find things out today, they go to the Internet. Over 90% of all TrueView ads are seen by a person. TrueView's behavioral and contextual capabilities dramatically increase the number of viewers who are interested in your product. And when compared to cable, television, or traditional advertising, where less than 1% of viewers are paying attention to the ad's message, TrueView just makes more sense. Our dealerships are as unique as the brands they represent and the markets they do business in. YouTube TrueView allows us to be surgical, to geo-target our consumer base and avoid waste in our advertising spend. We we'll spend the money. We did dip our tools into the water. And by jumping into the water, we saw the results that people went. Are you kidding? The great part is you only pay for what the viewer watches. When you have skippable ads, the viewer is in control. They're choosing to watch our ad. And the people that watch our ad, our average cost is about 10 cents. We're getting a million impressions a month through video pre-roll with over 100,000 completed views uh, just last month. 30% of the people that opened it watched it all the way through, a completed view. That's amazing and exciting. We know online video is the number one influencer in the research phase for the consumer. And YouTube TrueView helps us deliver the right message to the right consumer at the right time. That was a good video. I like that video. Yeah. You want to watch it again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, know. <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time. What? <laughs> okay. So yeah, again, you know, sometimes it's just better to hear from the dealers themselves. Yeah, we've got two more case studies in here. This one was in uh, AdAge. You can feel free to go on and read it, and and also you can check out ThinkWithGoogle.com. We've got a couple of these case studies in there. Again, ThinkWithGoogle.com. You can sort of buy automotive relevant uh, content. Uh, this dealer, uh, San Chevrolet out in, in Phoenix Market, they have two big Chevy stores. They were spending about 50k a month on TV alone. Uh, last year, they they shifted uh, 25,000 a month, and I understand that's a, a large sum of money from their TV budget over to TrueView ads. When they did that, they saw a 20% increase in website visitors and a 15% increase in dealership walk-in traffic. Their cost per interaction, or basically their cost per view on these ads, was only 15% or 15 cents. And when you think of that, what it costs to run one TV spot in a major market, whether you're running on, you know, the, the Final Four or maybe the NHL playoffs, right, that, that, that number is substantially larger. But it doesn't have to be a ton of money. We've had a, a great relationship with Suburban Subaru. Um, they have a pretty modest budget of 300 bucks a month. The first month they did it, they had a record sales month. By no means is Google taking credit for that. But what's important here is that they saw 3,744 completed views at a cost per view of eight cents. Uh, they also saw a 30% increase in monthly unique website traffic. So again, YouTube does a really good job of driving that consideration and, and delivering a really low cost per view. So again, the message here is it doesn't have to be a ton of money. You can get really surgical, <laughs> as uh, as they said in the video, and, and and target the people who are really in market. So. What if I don't have video? <laughs> what if I don't want to pay, you know, somebody three grand to make a spot for my ad spend that's going to be 500 bucks on YouTube? No problem. Uh, I'd encourage all of you that have an iOS device, no, it's not available for Android <laughs> yet, um, but we have a new app called YouTube Director for Business. It's totally free, and it's got a step-by-step -step, um, uh, kind of outline on how to shoot a really good video. Um, this is also, if you go to YouTube or Google and just type in YouTube Director for Business, you can see this video. Um, it's totally, like I said, the app is totally free, and you can shoot a video in under 15 minutes. So I'll play one more video for you, and then we'll wrap up. We're here today to show businesses how quick and easy it is to make a video ad for YouTube. We're asking businesses to take part in the YouTube Director Video Challenge. So you guys ready for the first part? Sure. Okay, so I want you to make a video about your business, film it, okay, edit it, put it on YouTube in 20 minutes or less. Can I cook instead? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, go, go. 
Twenty minutes on the clock. Ah! All right, all right, no clue. Welcome to my market, right? All right. Welcome to Pink. A lot of times you're actually fine. Eight minutes, Sarah. Oh, and I didn't press play. Those are all three-second videos. Do you know how to edit a video? Oh no, I'm trying to figure that out. Can it be on YouTube in ten seconds? Three, two, one. <laughs> So, how was the video? Yeah, it was hard. You know when you shoot like this? Oh, it's terrible. I had no story. I had no concept. Now I know why I became a barber and not a director. <laughs> well, you did okay. You ready for part two? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. The exact same thing, but I'm going to give you some help. Okay? Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to give you this. The YouTube Director for Business app. And it has all these templates on here. And she's going to guide you through the entire video. What? Okay? And help you publish it to YouTube. Really? All right, so here's a template right here. <sighs> Short owner story. 20 minutes on the clock. Okay. Go. Go. Describe yourself. Chat. We were talking about some products. This day, one of our awesome bartenders. Hi, I'm Nadia Geller. Welcome to Pink's Hot Dogs. I grew up in an old barbershop like this. Shot five. Explore what we have to offer. A variety of beautiful things for your home. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, right, we're already at editing. There's nothing to edit. We nailed it. We're 10 minutes. That's oh. amazing. Sounds like to make the film. I'm ready to publish. Alrighty. Awesome. So what took them 20 minutes to do poorly, <laughs> they used that app, which is free, if I'm getting, if I'm understanding this correctly. And then they were able to do it within 10 minutes? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> so, it, you know, I think if you're going to run advertising on YouTube, that's fantastic. Maybe you have the resources. Maybe you can use something like YouTube Director for Business. But even if you decide not to advertise on YouTube, <laughs> I think of this as a great opportunity to shoot some great content for your library, right? How to pair my phone on, uh, with my Bluetooth device, right? Or how, sorry, my car with my Bluetooth device. Or how to change a wiper blade. Or even, you know, why it's important to service your vehicle at, at, at a dealership because we have factory trained technicians and we use genuine, you know, quality parts. Uh, this app can be used for literally whatever you want. So uh, know that that's a free resource for you. Okay, wrap it up because I know we're coming up on time. You know, online video is the new test drive. It's the number one source that customers go to consume automotive content. The biggest thing for me is just, you know, online video drives consideration, uh, discovery, and influence. And you can use this data, Google's data, to be in front of the right people at the right time. And you can, you can be hyper-selective of who the audience is that you're, you're showing your content to. So with that, just a couple suggested resources. I, I, I think you'll get this presentation, right, Eliana? But sure, yeah. If you want to write this down, thinkwithgoogle.com is a great uh, place to go. There's a lot of good information there. <clears throat> I'd recommend doing a uh, speed test. Test my site, thinkwithgoogle.com. Uh, it shows you your basically your mobile speed score. Uh, you might be surprised at what you find, but it's an opportunity to you, for you to work with your digital partners uh, to improve your mobile presence. And then we just talked about the YouTube Director app for business, uh, again, available on iPhones only or iOS operating systems. So your homework for me, <laughs> analyze your media mix. See, see what your allocation looks like. I saw you know, a lot of people don't prioritize YouTube and online video today, and that's okay. But knowing, uh, hopefully you have got some more information today that you can now kind of maybe think about switching some of those dollars and, and advertising with YouTube to be in front of the right people. Um, you know, ask your, your partners and vendors how you can leverage YouTube either at your store at, or at your Tier 2 agency. Uh, and then download the app and start filming. So with that, I'll open it up to Q&A. Oh, I love it. Okay, we're going to turn on our webcams now. At least I will. 
Hopefully Tim will join me and not leave me hanging out here. Right, Tim? <laughs> hey, there you are. Thank you, sir. All right. So, audience, thank you so much for being an amazing audience. Tim, I'm just going to let you know right now. The questions that are coming in are amazing. Amazing questions coming in from the audience. Audience, keep it up. Get those questions in. We want to help you as much as we can. We got, hmm, let's say we'll... Let's say we, we do another 20 minutes or so of questions, all right? And then I um, also want to direct your attention over to the handouts section of the GoToWebinar interface. In there, you're going to find a really helpful handout from our friend Tim Mueller. It's, um, Tim, you can talk a little bit about this, too. Um, from what I understand, it's a one-pager, and it talks about uh, the YouTube ad formats that are available to you and all the different things that you can do. Tim, did you want to say anything else about this handout? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good guide for you. We talked about just a couple of different ad formats today, but you can use this as a, it's a one-shooter that's two pages, so go figure. But uh, you can use this to figure out what the best form of advertising on YouTube is for your dealership to solve for your business needs. Oh, wonderful. All right. So anyway, that handout, just look on the GoToWebinar interface and look for anything that says handouts. There's probably a little triangle next to it. Click on that triangle. It'll open up, and then you'll, you'll find that one handout for you to download, immediate download, and you can have it until the end of this broadcast to make sure you get that into your hands. All right. Before we get to the Q&A session, I wish I had some game show music for us, but I don't. But let's go to the next slide because you know what? Our good friends at Google are giving away a really cool prize today. I'm quite the jealous one today. I announced earlier that our good friends over at Google are giving away to one lucky attendee a Google Home. It's a voice-activated speaker that gives you hands-free help from the Google Assistant. This prize is valued at $130. It's seriously like the coolest freaking thing on the market today. I'm very jealous, like I said before. And um, all you have to do is get in front of your keyboards and be the first person to write in the correct response, and you will be winning this super cool prize today. We are going to ask that if you're a vendor, you know, we love you vendors, but we're actually going to ask you to sit this one out for us. If you wouldn't mind, this prize is intended for dealership personnel only. All right, everyone, here we go, and good luck. I hope you guys were paying great attention. According to Google's Path to Purchase study, how many hours does the average customer spend shopping for a car? That is correct. First person to write in. My goodness, that is good stuff. All right, let me see. I got to see what the last name is on this. Um, 16.75 hours. First person to write it in got it correct. Amanda Piccarillo. Ah, oh, my Irish friend. Amanda, congratulations. <laughs> Amanda, guess what? I'm going to need your mailing address so we can get this prize out to you as quickly as possible. So please write in your mailing address and also let us know what dealership you're from and what state and stuff like that so we can give you a proper congratulations. Amanda, I don't believe you've ever won on my show before. So congratulations on being a first-time dealer on webinar prize winner. And um, yes, the answer was 16.75 hours. And uh, Ryan would like to know if we're raffling off any of Tim's guitars. That's what you <laughs> know. <laughs> but you can have them. They don't get played very often. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, Amanda is uh, sending her very uh, vocal thank yous from Mercedes-Benz of White Plains. So congratulations. Um, somebody else, Adam, says he'll take the hockey stick, by the way. I'm pretty sure Adam's from Canada. Um, yeah, but guess what? Guess what, everyone? We didn't want to give this away earlier, but bonus prize. What? Yeah. Yes, I know. Somebody play some music. All right, bonus prize. We are also our good friends, I should say, not we, because I have nothing to do with it. But our good friends over at Google, like Tim, he's giving away another prize. A Chromecast. Yeah, this will help you stream your favorite online videos and entertainment from your phone or tablet straight to your TV. And guess what? Yeah, he's opened it up to the whole audience. That's right. Even you vendors out there, you have a chance to win this prize. You have a shot at winning this. So everyone has a shot at winning this. So good luck, everyone. So excited. According to Google's most recent Path to Purchase study, of the average, I'm sorry, of the 24 average touch points in the auto shopping process, how many are digital? My goodness, you people were paying really good attention. Yes, the first person who wrote this one in also got it right. Timothy Crab. Timothy Crab, I don't recall you ever winning a prize on my show either. Timothy Crab, where are you from, Timothy Crab? 
Let a girl know. Let a webinar goddess know. Amazing. Great name, by the way. Great name. <laughs> Why are you liking Timothy Crabb and you didn't say anything about Amanda Piccarillo? <laughs> I mean, Amanda's last name is, is pretty strong, but I like Timothy's first name. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, his first name. I'm slow on the uptake, but I got you now. Yeah. All right, so Tim <laughs> is from Augusta, Georgia, and he is from the Gerald Jones Auto Group. Congratulations, Timothy, and congratulations, Amanda. You two are both winners, and your prizes are going to be coming directly from our good friends over at Google. Timothy, don't forget to send me your uh, mailing address so we can get that prize out to you as well. And, uh, you know, I know. We give away two great prizes today. Congratulations to Amanda, um, I'm sorry, Amanda and Timothy. But you know what? The rest of you didn't win. It's okay, because you know what? You won with knowledge. But you know what? We give away great prizes every week. So come on back to another Dealer On webinar. And that might be your lucky day, the day that you win a cool prize and a Dealer On webinar. For right now, big congrats go out to Amanda and Timothy. And of course, we got to thank our good friends over at Google for their incredible generosity. So thank you, Tim. All right, everyone, now it's time for the good stuff. You ready? The Q&A session. So great questions have been coming in all throughout the show. So Tim, I hope you're ready for this onslaught of questioning from our audience. Fire away. All right, here we go. First question comes in from Amanda Duffy. And Amanda says, will TrueView discovery ads show as AD? As AD. What uh, can we, <laughs> what do you mean by AD? I don't know. That's what it says. And I read it. <laughs> um, if, if, she, if you can write back in and, and go a little deeper. All right, Amanda, we're asking you to write back in and give us a little bit more on this. She hasn't written back in yet. Oh, will they show as paid display versus organic? Oh, yes. It will show as paid display. Much like uh, if you think of Google paid search review or uh, listings, right? There's a little box that says add. Uh, it will show as paid. Oh, okay, wonderful. Okay, uh, Amanda, do you have a follow-up question? If not, then uh, we hope that helped you out. But if you do, send it on in and we'll get right to it. Okay, next question comes in from Devon. Hey, Devon. He says, what's the best way to tag and optimize videos for SEO? And do you have any resources that you can recommend? Okay, so I may be today's expert, but I am not an expert on SEO. Um, fair or enough. video. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but I do. I, I know we have the resources. I am happy to uh, do some digging for you and and provide you with those resources. Okay. Thank you so much. Great question, Devon. Okay. Next question comes in from Josh. He says we're a small independent used car dealer and we're looking to get videos to YouTube. What is the best software to make walkarounds quick and easy, but still professional looking? <clears throat> Yeah, I think the, the YouTube director application is a, is a great way to do that. Um, you know, so long as you have an iOS device, uh, it, you can quickly and easily edit the footage right there on your dealership lot and post it to your channel. So, you know, most of the cameras out there today shoot in 1080p. Um, that's the direction I'd go. And, and that way it's a scalable solution where you can shoot, you know, multiple videos uh, in, in one day. Um, obviously, every used car is, is different and unique. Uh, so the more content you have out there, you know, it, it's it's good for the consumer, right? It's that transparency we talked about. So that app can can help you shoot a, a number of cars probably in, in one day. Wonderful. Yeah, it did look really easy to use. I I mean, I would like to give it a shot. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Maybe <Yeah>. sometime. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Josh, I hope that helped you out. Um, oh, he says follow up question. Looks like Director is only for Apple. What do you use if you have an Android? Um, and so it should be out for Android this summer. Oh, uh, excellent. Good, because I have an Android. <laughs> yeah, so only available for, <coughs> excuse me, for iOS today. Um, you know, our, our products, and then our leadership will say this, our products must work on every device. So uh, they rolled it out for iOS first, which I understand may, may seem backwards, but um, I know that they are in the process of developing it for Android. Um, so I think the last I heard was either late spring or early, early summer. Don't hold me to that, but, uh, that's, I believe the last I heard. That sounds great. All right, Josh, thank you for the great question. All right. Next one comes in from Michael. 
I like that name. My husband's name is Michael. Okay, Michael says, do you find that videos which include a sales pitch on YouTube do not do as well as videos that are made more for entertainment? Talk, so, to, us, talk to us about content, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think it kind of depends on a number of things. If you're doing a sales event, um, and, and again, using Google's data, you can target the people who have raised their hand and are looking for cars in your market, right? Um, I, I, I don't have any data that supports one way or the other offhand, and I don't want to misspeak, but, you know, I think it depends on the audience you're segmenting. You know, I think, you know, obviously people go to YouTube to watch, you know, video walk-arounds and, and things like that, but, you know, I guess kind of the point here today is if you go online to watch the Jimmy Fallon clip, right, you can serve your ad to people that have been actively looking for a truck or a sedan or whatever it is you sell. Uh, in your market. So I don't know if that answers your question, um, but you know the, the, the kind of crux of today is serving that pre-roll ad to people that um, are in market and have shown signs that they're in market for a vehicle. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. Great question. If you have a follow-up, let me know. All right, next one comes in from Ryan. I like this question. He says, I'm relatively new to the chair here, <laughs> and social media management is a big portion of my job here. We have an old YouTube channel it's not being utilized. How do you recommend we get back on track? Should we be talking to our marketing company to produce videos? Should I start walking around with my iPhone making videos? And what kind of strategy should I begin with? Now, point noted, he did send in this question before you showed him the, that YouTube director app thing. So um, uh, what else can we help Ryan with? You know, I think that that question probably deserves a, a proper conversation because just telling you what to do, it's, a, it's, it's quite broad, right? I think my, my follow-up questions would be, what are your business objectives? Is there a particular model that you need to, to move that you're struggling with? Um, are you trying to reach a, a different segment of customers that you aren't currently reaching today? Um, there's a number of different ways to target with YouTube, so I, I think first to answer it properly, we need to understand what your business objectives are, and then from there you can create a plan in terms of creating content with your, your ad agency or your marketing company uh, and, and go forward from there. But, you know, without having more details, I, I, <laughs> I can't give you a good answer on that. <laughs> I, I completely understand. Okay, Ryan, phenomenal questions. If you have a follow-up or you want some more clarification on something, send that question in, okay? We'd love to help you some more. All right, next question comes in from Eric. He says, I know my dealership is behind on YouTube videos. As in, they don't do any videos. So what about <laughs> so what about the individual salesman? Since we are a business within a business, or would it be cost prohibitive? Again, this is from Eric. Yeah, um, I think you got to be careful. I, I, if I'm if I'm in your shoes, I would have somebody that um, looks at that content before it gets posted online and moderates it. Right. Um, just to make sure that you're you're portraying your dealership and your brand the way you'd want it to if you are the brand manager or marketing manager or or if you're the dealer principal. Um, I, I like personalization. I think if you if you shoot a nice video of uh, the sales folks, it's a great way to include in a follow-up link if someone's actively emailing back and forth with the customer. Um, and I think it's great to, to aggregate that content on your YouTube channel. Um, you know, it's it's funny, we've seen like a shift of things being too overly produced and now people like kind of the organic or grassroots type of, uh, of videos, but I don't think it's a bad thing to do. Um, I, and I don't, you know, to answer your question about being cost prohibitive, um, with that app, I, it won't cost you anything. I like the sound of that. Eric, I hope you do too. Uh, come on back to us with another question if you have it. All right, next question comes to us from Brian. Brian says, can Tim provide links to those videos used in this presentation? Um, yes, I think all but one. So I will send those to you, Eliana, and you can include them. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Brian, if you have, uh, if you'd like to get those links, please email me directly at Eliana at dealeron.com. And when Tim gets them to me, well, I'll get them to you. All right, next question comes in from Ryan. He says, probably more of a technical question, but the previous manager of the YouTube channel that's gone unused is no longer here. Can I recover that account somehow? I believe the answer is yes. 
Um, if you want to go ahead and email Eliana the details, she can forward it along to me, and I'll get with somebody on my team, uh, one of our account managers, uh, and we can get that answer for you. And, and oh, that would be great. Yeah, that's not the first time I've heard that happen, where they, you know, they put the... Yeah. Yeah, if they're it, the administrator, it's kind of hard because, I mean, so uh, just so we know, for dealerships out there, um, who should be the administrator for the YouTube account so something like this doesn't happen again? The, in my opinion, it's it's the the dealer principal or you know whoever the challenge we have in this industry is we have turnover, right? So if somebody comes in and sets something up and then leaves a couple months later, that information goes with them. So whoever you know at the store is going to be that kind of keeper of all those all those uh, logins. And you know at, at the end of the day, the dealer principal typically doesn't go anywhere. Um, right. Just just have kind of a, a passbook of of all those logins and and passwords. Okay, all right. But I'm sure we can solve for your problem. Uh, okay, so Ryan did write back and he says, thank you for both. All right, next question comes in from Amanda. Amanda says, what's the average click-through rate on the TrueView discovery ads? Uh, so that's going to that's gonna vary. It's going to vary by market. It's going to vary by brand. That's not the metric we, we look at. I know when we're talking about paid search, we look at click-through rate. We look at, you know, quality score. We look at... Um, cost per click, we look at conversion rate. The main metric you want to look at here on, on TrueView is cost per view and what your view through rate is. So basically, you know, in the back end of AdWords, you'll be in, or in your analytics rather, you'll be able to see how many people skipped at five seconds, uh, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, and so on. The reason that's important is you can tweak your creative because the goal is for those people to watch your entire spot, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's going to vary. Again, I apologize. I don't have a, a concrete answer for that, but it's, it's kind of the same thing as paid search, right? Your cost per click in a big market like New York City for Honda might be five, six bucks, um, but in a smaller rural market, you may be a dollar. So there, there, there's not a definitive uh, answer for that, so I apologize, but um, <laughs> again, happy, happy to follow up with your particular market and store. Oh, that's very kind of you. All right, Amanda, thank you so much for that. I'm going to skip down to this other question because it's it's kind of on on track. Uh, I don't usually skip down, but uh, I think we're we're right there. Um, uh, Paul wrote in, "What is a good cost per view for in-stream video ads?" Yeah, we see the cost per view again. It's going to vary a little bit, but we see the average cost per view between eight cents and and fifteen cents. Um, if you're, you know, it depends on your targeting methodologies as well. Um, it depends on, on a lot of things, and I wish there was more concrete answers, but obviously this is a big algorithm. Um, it depends on who you're targeting, how broad you're targeting, how relevant your ad is, right? So, again, using that Pampers example, if I get an ad for baby diapers, I'm going to skip that all day. So your cost <laughs> is on that, right, because it's, it's irrelevant. Um, but if I watch that full spot, you know, you, you'd only get charged when you, when you watch the full thing. But, you know, on average for automotive segment, we're seeing cost per views as low as five cents, and and you know some as high as twenty cents. But um, you know that's kind of the range. Not too shabby. All right, thank you so much for that one, Paul. All right, uh, different questions from a different Paul. He says, "What edit features come with YouTube Director? For instance, can we add text?" Yes, you can. You can add text. You can add sound. Um, you can uh, you can slice the video up into segments right on the app. So it's basically what about like, like your logo? Can you add your logo? Uh, I'm pretty sure you can. You know, I candidly, I've never, I messed with it a little bit, but I didn't think about adding a logo. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, I don't, I don't know either. Can you add like, do you take still pictures or it's all video? Can you add? Yeah, there, there, there's a bunch of different templates in there. Yeah. Um, I gotta think you can. Well, I'm, I'm quite certain you can because in those videos we watch, they use their logo, Pink's Hot Dogs. I think you can, too. It would be hard to imagine that you wouldn't be able to add your logo. But um, great questions. I told you they had good questions today, really? didn't I, Tim? <laughs> okay, let's keep going. We're doing good. You're doing good. All right, um, next question comes in from Adam. He says, what is the timeline for releasing YouTube Director for Business on Android? You know, seeing as YouTube is a Google product, Android is Google. All right, so you already answered that. You said You said summertime, right? That, that's the last I heard. I can I can ask the question again in my follow-up to you, and we can provide that answer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
new questions come in from Andrew. Andrew says, what top video KPIs do you recommend looking at? So uh, we want to look at the view through rate. We want to look at the, the percentage of, um, of videos that were totally viewed for the entire 30 seconds. Um, I've got a one sheeter on that as well, Eliana, that I can send to you. Oh, um, all right. We're getting all kinds of good information out of you today. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, that's what we're here for, right? So I will send that, and if you could disperse that to, was it Andrew? Yes. Or, or feel free to send it to everybody. You know what? I mean, um, I will certainly send that over. Speaking of handouts, I hope everyone has gotten the chance to download that handout that we have right now for immediate download because the broadcast is going to be ending in just a few minutes. I want to make sure you, you guys all have that. All right. Follow-up question from Andrew. And I, I have to say, this might very well be my favorite question of the day because I think it's just kind of sums it all up. He says, how do you define success after a month of running video? <laughs> <laughs> kind of a... Kind of a loaded question. I mean, I know he's totally putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. Have, yeah. You've never been well, on my show before. Yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah, no, all all good. You know, it, again, it kind of depends on what your business objectives are. Um, I don't think you look at YouTube, by the way, as the same way you do for search. So let let's be clear on that. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, don't look at the the metrics in a 30 day window. And I know we live in these 30 day windows. Yeah. But just like a campaign, it needs time to, you know, to kind of get that message in front of the people and to have that frequency uh, just like a TV spot would. You know, if your objective is to sell more Odysseys, and I don't, I don't know what you sell, Andrew, but let's say you're a Honda dealer for a minute. Mm -hmm. If your objective is to sell more Odysseys and you're, you're serving ads to people that are looking for vans in your market, and over time you start to sell more Odysseys, to me that's, that's success. Um, but again, you know, not knowing your, your, your business objectives, um, you know, my, my, my thought would be, you know, shoot, if you're, if you're advertising Odysseys and you're, you're, you're focused on that, the, the metric would be, am I selling more Odysseys? <laughs> I guess that would be the metric. <laughs> All right. Andrew. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, in terms of like, if you're looking at like analytics, I think looking at the, you, the number of unique visitors that hadn't been to your site before, that's a good metric. Again, I'm going to send the one pager over that you can look at. Um, so hopefully that, hopefully that helped. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. And if anyone would like a copy of that, Hey, email me at Eliana at dealeron.com. And when I get my grubby little hands on it, well, then you will have it as well. All right. Thank you so much. Great questions from Andrew. Appreciate it. Okay. We still have a large amount of questions left, so we're going to keep going. All right, Tim, I see you keep drinking. Yeah. So keep drinking some water, all right? Um, yeah. ne next question comes in from Amanda. She says, what is the best way to leverage tags for a YouTube video for our business? So I think that question is pertaining to uh, organic video. Again, uh, that's one of my follow-ups. Uh, again, not, not an organic expert by any means. Um, but in, in that follow-up, as I committed, I'll, I'll get you some more information on, on SEO. Okay, thank you so much. Amanda, great question. Next question comes in from Diane. <laughs> Hi, Diane. She says, I want to know more about the guitars in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you before the show, before the show, Tim said he hasn't touched any of those guitars in like three years. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm so rusty. I, and, and Eliana threw a curveball at me today, just so I was in the audience. I didn't me? know I was actually on camera. So I didn't bother to, you know, put, even put a collared shirt on or, or put my contacts in. So oh, I you look good. Don't worry oh. about it. Yeah. <laughs> They're oh. not for sale, though. I did ask him. They're not for sale. <laughs> it, it is, everything's for sale. It's price for everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> One million dollars. Okay. Thank you, Diane. You always make me laugh. All right. Next question comes in from Allison. Allison, it's not really a question, actually. She says, thank you so much, Tim. I was struggling knowing what kind of content is most beneficial. Now I know we're on the right track. Very awesome. nice. Thank That's you, Allison. Coming. All right. Um, uh, we only have a few more left, and then we'll start closing out the show. All right. Next yeah. question comes in from Lee. Lee says, if you use music in your video, do you need to have copyrights to the music? I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes. Yeah. If you're selling something, then yes, you have to pay for the copyright. All right. So thank you so much, Lee, for that. Next question comes in from Michael. 
He says, how often do you recommend changing ad campaigns? Of course, it depends on the content itself, but is there any strategic reason to change out ads every week, every month, or in a specific time frame? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right, it depends on what you're advertising. For, the, for the, the gentleman who asked the question about the used car content, obviously that, that kind of video is going to change more frequently as you sell those cars, right? You don't want to advertise on vehicles you don't have. Um, you know, I, I like 90-day windows for, for push marketing like this. Um, I think, you know, with consistency, it, it's good for the consumer, right, because you're going to serve that ad, you know, five, six, seven, eight, maybe maybe ten times. Again, you can adjust that on the back end of your AdWords campaign. But, you know, once you hear something a couple times, it, it starts to resonate. The other reason I like the consistency for at least 90 days Again, this is assuming you're doing like a, a vehicle exchange event or something like that, right? Um, the, it's it's good for the salespeople, right? Because in our business, you know, one weekend it's a tent sale, and then it's the red tag sale, and then it's the upgrade program, and then it's you know, you name it, right? And our salespeople inherently forget what's going on or what the event is. So having consistency in your marketing strategy allows your your salespeople to kind of get their talk tracks down, and it's also good for the customer because you know, you kind of hear that frequency across the different mediums. I like that idea. And also, I think for those dealerships who take it a step further, and I know you were talking about tent sales, but, you know, a lot of times dealerships nowadays, uh, hopefully more and more of them, are doing a lot of, um, you know, like Toys for Tots things, and, you know, they're raising money, you know, at their dealerships for different charities, or they're attending a charity event where they're a sponsor. And <coughs> do you feel it's worth it? to make videos for those kind of events as well? Will that help them out? I think so. You know, I think you can make those videos and, and post them to your YouTube channel and then share them all over social media or if you're sending out an email blast, you know, include it in the email blast. It, it, you know, from a paid perspective, I think it's a, I think it's a good feel good, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or if you're doing, hey, for every, you know, we're donating 5% of our vehicle profit or wh whatever the number is, right, uh, to Toys for Tots, you can certainly advertise with that. But with that app, you know, you can generate that content and, and aggregate that content on your YouTube channel. I love it. All right. That sounds like a great idea. All right, Michael, thank you so much for the great question. Hope you had fun with that. All right. Amanda says, and you might have answered this a little bit, but she says, what's the best way to track the success of those ads? Yeah, so it, it, analytics. I mean, you, again, with the information I'm going to provide to Eliana, um, you want to look at, how, how it's performing, right? You want to look at uh, if people are skipping in the first five seconds, right? Maybe you're not getting your message to them quick enough or, or you're not delivering the, the punchline quick enough. Um, if, you're, if you're seeing a lot of people complete the view, that means you're targeting the right people and you're giving them a compelling message. So depending on what your business objective is, uh, that answer will probably vary. Um, if you're looking to get more unique site traffic, you know, that should be your metric you look at. Um, if you're looking to get as many people to watch it as possible, that, you know, the, the, the total views should be the metric you look at. It all really depends on your business objective. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Great question, Amanda. All right. Next question. Oh, last question. Second to last question. Another one just came in. Devon says, what is most effective length for three types of videos, test drives, features and options, and walkthroughs? You know, that's, that's a little bit different. You know, I don't think of pre-roll advertising or, or um, in-stream advertising on YouTube as those types of videos. I think those are great uh, organic videos. I, I think, you know, we live in, like, anything over two minutes is kind of long. This is my personal opinion. This is not a Google opinion. Um, if you can stick to two minutes or less, I think that's good information. Now, if you're doing a, a comparison, right, you may not be able to compare the – um, the EX versus the EXL in two minutes. So that may be a longer video. Right. Um, but, you know, we don't have any data that supports that. And it sounds like that question is really more for organic videos that you'd be aggregating on your YouTube channel. Okay. So I'll, I'll turn it around. If we were asking about pre-roll ads or just, you know, regular ads, what's the preferred length of video for those? Um, preferred or if, I, if I'm a dealer, I'm sticking to anything either 15 or 30 seconds. Okay, that's short. Okay. All right, Devon, thank you so much for that question. Yeah, you can do 60 seconds. A lot of movie trailers will do 60 seconds, things like that, but 
Um, they have stuff you know. that blows up, so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy. Last question. Andy wants to know: Is that an orange one a Gibson? <laughs> Uh, that one is not. It's an Ibanez, but I think it's a really cool, cool guitar. Okay. <laughs> and they're all for sale? No, none for sale? <laughs> Name your price. Fire sale. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such a good I think my wife will be happy. I think she wants to redo the office. No, so I like them on the wall. I like them. I like them. You tell Sabrina, yeah. hands off. All right. That's right. <laughs> Tim, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure having you today. And you threw out so much amazing information. We do appreciate it. All right, audience, if you have questions left that maybe were unanswered, email them to me. I'll see if I can get you an answer, all right? It's Eliana at DealerOn.com. And certainly that extra handout or anything else that you heard that maybe you want to get your hands on, again, email me and let's see what we can do for you. Of course, we got to thank Tim Mueller. Great presentation today. I hope this won't be the last time and you'll be brave enough to come back and do another show with me sure. again sometime awesome. soon. Oh, yeah, I would love that. Appreciate it. Thank you. I want to remind the audience, yes, we're going to send you a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording. It's going to be emailed to you later today. So please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Today's webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars. There you can view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. And yeah, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. So please fill it out because we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. And we want to know what you thought of today's presentation. And I got big news for everyone. Invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar. And Tim, I know you can talk a little bit about this, but I won't put you on the spot. It is everything you need to know about local link building. Yeah, because you know what? Google likes when you have local links, don't they? Just shake your head yes, Tim. Yep, there you go. All right. So by now, by now, everyone understands that showing up in search results is absolutely crucial to the success of your business. However, most dealerships don't make use of one of the most valuable SEO strategies, link building. It's time to get fired up about local search and start a comprehensive link building strategy. Want to know how? Well, I got it for you. This one-hour webinar is going to provide you with a link building roadmap to help you identify the right types of link opportunities to target. Google looks at all the sites that link back to you and your competitors. Years ago, links were all about quantity and domain authority. Now, with recent algorithm changes, local relevance plays a bigger role than ever before. This presentation will show how to build relevant local links that will improve your online visibility. This is a game changer that you've been waiting for, people, so don't miss this webinar on 420 to learn great local link building strategies that will smoke your competition. So register now. Don't forget Dealer Owns Weekly Webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics, well, I'd love to hear from you. You can track me down online. I'm everywhere. I'm on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, you name it. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or you know what? You can just email me directly at Eliana at DealerOn.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And I hope to see you all on another webinar in our continuing education series. Take care, everyone. And thank you, Tim. <laughs> thank you. Take care.